I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, January the 15th, brought to you in part by Zach Tran. Packers are positioning themselves, as we spoke earlier in the week, uh, they're starting to get a little red ink on, on some of these closeouts, uh, and uh, they don't like losing money, and, and uh, now they get a little taste of what these cattle feeders go through uh, the majority of the time. But uh, they are looking at ways to, to change that. They've raised some of the prices on their box beef cutouts, and, and the values are, are increasing a little bit as they did on Tuesday, but at light volume. They had big movement last week. Uh, as some of your end users, your, your beef buyers, were taking advantage of, of kind of bargain basement prices there. And, and uh, so they had a big movement last week, raising the prices, not as much moving this week, but they've got to get, uh, get those uh, values back up a little bit. Also, they are scaling back their Saturday slaughter. Uh, we've, we've gotten used to big Saturday slaughter uh, ever since this summer after we had the, the fire at Tyson Fresh Meats in Holcomb, Kansas. And, uh, and that's really what, what made us have uh, continuing uh, heavy harvest all through the year. And it was actually up over a percent for the year despite having a, a major plant that kills uh, nearly 6,500 a day. Uh, down for for the biggest part of the late summer and fall there but uh, Saturday kills are now being scaled back so those workers will have a little bit more time off there but uh, trying to slow production down a little bit so that they can increase the uh, the, the prices on their box beef cutouts and you can't blame them for that but uh, with the extremely light movement we've seen in negotiated sales uh, they're still going to have to to get aggressive on this week's fat cattle market if they want to get something bought. Uh, talking about some of the packers, uh, your big Brazilian packer JBS, the world's largest real meat processor, has announced that they are opening uh, the Incredible Lab, which is an innovation center for plant-based foods. Uh, so really, uh, what kind of friend are they to your real meat producer there? But uh, they've already been responsible for creating the, the Incredible Burger, which has had some success there. But uh, they just want to maintain uh, being the big provider of protein. They're not really concerned about uh, what form of protein that is, whether it's fake protein, whether it's uh, pork, uh, chicken, or beef. Uh, they just want to maintain uh, their, their market percentage there and, and the volume that they're, they're trading. Let's look at the board for Tuesday. February live cattle futures up 30 cents, kind of uh, getting its legs back after being down earlier in the week. But uh, February closed at 126.85. April up 35 cents at 127.87. January feeder cattle down just 12 cents at 145.90. March also down 12 cents at 145.72. Your fat cattle trade has been uh, pretty much uh, uneventful so far this week, which is not unusual, just Monday and Tuesday, but not really any trade you can sink your teeth into. Uh, some few pens of mixed steers and heifers, you can't really call the trend on those. But uh, we did hear some bids being uh, barked out a little bit uh, in the Northern Plains. Uh, some regional bids of 199 this early in the week uh, on a $2 market. That's not too bad of an opening bid. Uh, did hear that they had call-in bids from a major at two dollars, so that is uh, pretty uh, major there, uh, and it uh, goes to show that we should have at least a steady market this week with a call-in bid at two hundred dollars dressed. Or a guy said that they might send a postcard for two hundred five, but it might not get there in time. But uh, let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index. Uh, on t after Tuesday's trade at 145.70, that's down 22 cents, and basically your, your feeder cattle have been pretty much steady, uh, but uh, they are starting to fall a little bit. We haven't had any big, uh, really premium type sales, those ones that give those big monster prices this week so far, and so uh, we've just been had some big high volume sales there, and it's sucking it back a little bit, but 145.70 for an index value based on an 800 pound steer, uh, that's pretty darn close to what your spot feeder cattle contract price is at at 145.90, so we can't complain too much. But uh, look at the markets on some of your big sales that happened on Tuesday. 
OKC West, the calf sale that they have on Tuesday, 4,000 head of calves. Uh, steer and heifer calves trading three to six dollars higher with the peewees, those weighing under 500 pounds, eight to ten dollars higher. And I've been talking the last several visits about how these guys have really just come uncorked on buying their stalker calves already because uh, as we look around we see how many cows we've slaughtered we see how many uh, heifers we've fed and harvested uh, there's not going to be an overabundance of, of lightweight calves uh, and when we get into March and April with so many people spring calving not near enough fall calving so they better get in on those pretty early and, and also we've noted that those lightweights have been kind of a bargain all through fall and and most of the winter so far here so raising the price on those isn't really uh, out of the realm of uh, possibility Ozarks Regional Stockyards in West Plains Missouri 3600 head for the big Tuesday sale steer calves there two to four dollars higher uh, they're buying them over that way too heifer calves steady to three dollars higher and Dan Hill there my friend that reports the market he called the feeders mostly steady I will be in West Plains Missouri yeah I was just up in, in the Midwest there for uh, 10 days or two weeks but uh, got another event going to be there uh, sponsored by Hearst Farm Supply and uh, looking for a good crowd in West Plains, Missouri at the Civic Center there. Uh, be giving a presentation and I hope as many of you can, uh, can show up as possible and like to get some of you uh, Arkansas people coming up to West Plains and, and uh, viewing that, uh, that talk. But uh, that'll be Thursday night. But uh, let's look at several individual quotes on Tuesday. I love to give uh, individual feeder cattle quotes. That's my favorite thing to do. Winter Livestock, Lahana, Colorado. My friend John Campbell and company there selling those lightweight calves pretty high there too. Here's some, some bigger midweight calves. 57 head of 583 pounds. That's scaring 600 pounds pretty good at 174. That's an impressive quote there. Uh, Philip the Giant had a pretty good sale there, well over 3,000 head on offer on Tuesday up in South Dakota. Look at 85 head, 641 pound steer, cal steer calves at 166.75. Beaver County Stockyards, I was up there in the neighborhood on Monday uh, videoing some cattle at Slap Out, Oklahoma at the Mester Hereford Ranch there, but uh, didn't make it over to Beaver, but it wasn't sale day, so no reason to go. But Beaver County stockyards they sold a lot of yearlings and they were in there tight on the market there but didn't see any real stick out deals but 54 head of peewee 375 pound steers in the desert no man's land uh, Oklahoma there in the panhandle but a uh, pretty good slug of 375 pound peewee steers at 216 Kimball, South Dakota. My friends, the Christensen's there run a good sale. I uh, saw a couple of big quotes for them uh, at the Kimball Livestock Exchange. 63 head of 559 pound steer calves in Kimball, South Dakota, 191. And 66 head of 790 pound feeder steers at 156.35. But the top quote come out of Nebraska, as a lot of times it does on Tuesday, Imperial Nebraska, Imperial Auction Market there, 189 head of 859 pound feeder steers, 155.75. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.